Hi everyone, it's James here. Welcome to another video. So today's topic is going to be a theme which uh, has been preying on my mind recently, so I thought I would get it done. And it's called Unlikely Candidates for Favourite Songs. And I'm going to guess that this is a theme that is going to chime with people. So this is the idea that when you're really into a band or an artist, more often than not, it's the deep cuts that become favourites, the obscure songs, the things that uh, casual listeners and casual fans probably are not even going to know. You know, my partner often says to me, the best way you could uh, prune down your your music collection is to just get the greatest hits of all your favourite artists. But it kind of, it does slightly miss the point that uh, more often than not, it is the obscure things which appeal. So I thought it'd be quite good fun to do a video where I choose um, maybe 10 or so really obscure, well not really obscure, but quite obscure songs by some of my favourite artists. Things that are really off the beaten track. I'm not going to say for definite that these are all, you know, my favourite because, you know, as we all know, our favourite songs will change from day to day, from week to week. But, um, you know, I think if you were to ask me on any given day, I might say, right, well, you know, this is the song I want to hear by this artist. Uh, so, um, yes. Now, one of the things that kind of inspired me to actually do the video was watching a video that Ross Goodall uploaded, and this was quite recently. I think he was doing his favourite albums of 1977, or he was ranking them, and uh, he and I had a little uh, exchange in the comment section on his video because he dismissed a couple of songs from this record, which I really love. Um, this is Out of the Blue, of course, by um, ELO, and the two... the, the, the Two songs that he was a bit sniffy about were Jungle on side two, which was always a favourite of mine back when I was uh, when I was growing up. It was one of those songs that we would listen to as a family together. Just love the production on it, and uh, it's just great fun. I've just always loved it. You know, it's always been a favourite of mine. And and Ross also was a bit dismissive of the instrumental cut The Whale on side two, which has long been a big uh, headphone favourite of mine. There's all sorts of really mad stereo panning in that song and it's just some incredible lavish musical textures um, so yeah that was kind of what inspired me to actually do do the video and um, you know I guess often it's the way isn't it the the more famous songs are the ones which are just played out on the radio again this is the theme that's been doing the rounds recently so often it's the more obscure cuts that you end up um, gravitating towards now a while ago I did a Beatles I think it was my favorite Beatles song songs of all time and I nearly put this song at the top of the list and I ended up chickening out and I ended up putting Day in the Life at the top which is a bit of an obvious choice and a friend of mine here on YouTube Gary Hall he messaged me to say oh, I wish I wish you'd put the song that I know is your favorite at number one and I said yeah it is my favorite on some days and I must admit from the Beatles White Album. I am inordinately fond of the song Martha My Dear, which is the piano song at the start of Side 2, written by Paul McCartney as a challenge to himself, really. He wanted to write what he described as a proper piano piece. He was having piano lessons at the time and he wanted to try to demonstrate to himself that he could play something quite ambitious. And it was a really ambitious piano piece. And he wrote a song about his dog, Martha, and there's a brass band arrangement in the song and it's one that always brings a smile to my lips a song that always makes me feel good it's an obscure deep cut you know casual Beatles fans are not going to know it but on any given day I would say yeah Martha my dear is is if not my favorite Beatles song and certainly one of my favorites I did have it in the list I just didn't have it at number one I think it was top ten just staying on the subject of McCartney for a moment having done the Beatles I thought I would do Wings from the London Town album, I mean, there's all sorts of songs you could choose, you know, deep cuts from McCartney and Wings, but one which was always, always important to me ever since I was a kid. On side two of this record, sung by Denny Lane, whose signature can be seen uh, on the back of that record, uh, you've got the song Deliver Your Children, which was, I think it was a Lane McCartney co-write. It's a fast-paced folk song with a bit of a dark narrative theme to it, really catchy chorus. I love the, there's a, there's a great middle eight in the song where, where Lane and McCartney do harmony vocals. It's just a really unique song. It's one I've always, I've always loved. And um, like I said before, if on any given day you said to me, right, name your favourite wing song ever, and I had to think quickly, uh, I might I might well pick that one. So, Deliver Your Children by Wings. Now this one sprung to mind straight away, and this is a song I have spoken about a few times on my channel. So The Kinks, I mean, 
you know, I've always said my all-time favourite Kink song is probably Lola, but um, I have heard that rather a lot of times. So um, actually, and um, Victoria as well actually is a great is a great favourite of mine. But from this album, from Muswell Hillbillies, I've always had a soft spot for the song Cup of Tea which is just a quintessentially British English song. It's the only kind of, it's the Kinks are the only band that could ever have got away with a song like that. Essentially, it's just about the fact that we all like to have a cup of tea and it cheers us up. And uh, my favorite lyric from the song is where he says that uh, it cures the medical condition water on the knee. And uh, I do think that Ray Davis is, is the only songwriter um, for whom that lyric could possibly occur, you know, a cup of tea um, cures water on the knee. <laughs> it just always makes me laugh, always cheers me up, and uh, always a great favourite of mine. I don't think you'll find it on any on any Kinks um, greatest hits or best of the Kinks compilations. I could be wrong. I stand to be corrected. Often with this with this topic, it's often the songs you heard first or songs you heard early on when you were getting to know an artist that end up being your favourites. And this one is, is a real deep cut, really, from the first Bob Dylan album I ever heard. Now, with Dylan, obviously, there are so many tracks you could pick as favourites. Even when you start to get into the deep cuts, there are just hundreds of songs which could uh, fit the bill. I'm not going to say this one is, is a great song, but it's just one that always appealed to me. And it is on... Um, I think it's on side one of this record, yeah, so the third track, Everything Is Broken, uh, which just has a fantastic production, great bass line, got, you know, you've got the Daniel Lanois production, and essentially it's just a list of objects that are broken, and he just goes through, um, and uh, I don't know what it was about the song, it just always appealed to me, just this, this, just this idea of listing broken things, I guess you could read it as a kind of metaphor, uh, for, I, I don't know, you know, the ills of society or something. I don't know, I don't really, you know, have to read anything into the song to enjoy it. It's just got a great infectious groove. I like the percussion on it. There's all kinds of hand percussion in the background. Dylan does a good vocal and, um, yeah, just a fairly, a fairly obscure Dylan cut, uh, which has always been a big favourite of mine. Everything is broken. Had to include a bit of Queen in the list, of course, and again, there's, there's all kinds of songs. I nearly picked, just to be provocative and to annoy Richard McCook, I nearly picked um, Sleeping on the Sidewalk from News of the World, which is a favourite of mine, even though it's just a silly, inconsequential uh, blues song, really. That's the thing with quite a few of these songs, you know, this idea of them being inconsequential. There's quite often um, a thing where a song which seems quite tossed off, bit of a throwaway, uh, but for some reason it just becomes a favourite, it lodges, it uh, it becomes a song that you associate great memories with, or there's just something about it, even though it's it's fairly inconsequential. This one is not inconsequential, this is actually quite a, a moody, um, I think it's just a great song really, from side two of Sheer Heart Attack, the Brian May song, She Makes Me, Stormtrooper in Stilettos, which I know is a great favourite of Rob Ison here on the VC as well. Just a very moody, slightly sinister song, really, and uh, it's got this sort of very slow, plodding beat. Great, um, heavy drums by Roger Taylor, and the song ends with all these kind of nightmarish sound effects, heavy breathing. It's got a beautiful melody. I love Brian May's tremulous vocal delivery on it. Not a song which is ever going to crop up on any Queen compilation albums, I don't imagine, but uh, long been a favourite. Stormtrooper, uh, sorry, she makes me Stormtrooper in Stilettos from Sheer Heart Attack. Um, next one, a band that's uh, I got into quite recently, like in the last couple of years, and it is um, Camel, the British uh, prog rock band, art rock band, whatever you want to call them. And this is this is an album from kind of a bit later in their career. I think it's 1977, maybe. This is I Can See Your House From Here. And there's a song on this which I have played just over and over again. When I hear it, it just makes me happy. I have to cue it up again and again. And it's the second to last song uh, on side two, and it's called Remote Romance. And it's really nothing like any of the other Camel stuff that you know. It's not really a prog rock song at all. It's a kind of quirky, electronic English pop song, really, with some great backing vocals, just a really infectious hook, uh, great tune, really nice arrangement, actually. Definitely a pop song. Like I said, it's, uh, it's not what you describe as classic Camel but it's, uh, it's just one that always appealed to me and um, I have been known to listen to it on repeat uh, on my phone 
whilst out walking. This one I re-listened to last night and realised that I had to include something from this. This is uh, The Bells by Lou Reed, an album I discovered back in the very late 90s and um, this album gets a bit of a bad press. I know Jeff Calico Silver uh, here on YouTube, who's a big Lou Reed fan, he doesn't have much time for this record really. And uh, I, I mean I nearly, I nearly picked uh, Disco Mystic, which is the second song, but I decided not to because that song does get on my nerves a bit sometimes. So in the end, um, I went for the song on side, I think it's on, I think it's on side two, I could be mistaken. Um, City Lights, which, um, like most of this album, on the surface it seems to be fairly inconsequential. This album is not really what you describe as a classic, full-blooded Lou Reed album. It's less to do with the lyrics, more to do with the musical textures. Uh, quite a lot of horns on this album. You've got, um, I think Don Cherry is on here. It's a very sort of New York album, but it's it's kind of influenced by disco and dance music and a bit of club culture going on, really. But um, City Lights, I think, is just a wonderful song. I would I would I would take it any day, you know, over Perfect Day or uh, even Walk on the Wild Side. It's just it's got a lovely loping piano bass groove to it. Lovely sort of sounds in the background all the way through sort of bells and hand percussion whistling and um, I don't really know what the song is about there's some really nice lyrics don't these city lights bring us together is the main refrain and uh, it's just a lovely evocation really of just you know living in a city maybe walking through the city at night watching the light it's got a lovely twinkly production to it um, maybe Lou Reed himself was quite fond of the song because there was a compilation, there was a Lou Reed compilation album later which was called City Light, so maybe it was a song that he was he was fond of, I don't know, but um, yeah, quite a deep cut from a record which is, is not very well regarded, so wanted to have it. Uh, two more, uh, we've got uh, Steely Dan from the first Steely Dan album, Can't Buy a Thrill. Obviously, you know, so many contenders for um, great Steely Dan deep cuts. Let's try and go this side to avoid the, um, the glare. But the song that I've always loved on this record, and I've learned something about it this morning, just doing a little bit of research, um, on side one, the song Only a Fool Would Say That, which is a very short and sweet bossa nova style song with congas and acoustic guitars it sounds really summery very short song and um, you could argue you know maybe musically one of the lighter songs on the record but I've just always loved it just the groove the sound of the vocals it's just magical but apparently it was a song written about John Lennon it was in the wake of the Imagine uh, song and um, Donald Fagan was basically making the point that he, he thought that John was a bit of a fool really uh, you know, lampooning this idea of a sort of rich, moneyed rock star asking people to imagine no possessions. Um, you know, when there's when there's people out there with no with no money, living very hard lives. Uh, so he refers to a boy with a plan, a natural man wearing a white Stetson hat. Uh, and again, I, I just not picked up on that at all. You know, the white hat, the the famous John Lennon white hat. And he sings, you do his nine to five, drag yourself home half alive, and there on the screen, a man with a dream. Quite cutting. I mean, it was really, really fascinating. I had no idea about that, really. It was, I mean, to me, it was a song. I could hear that it had some kind of satirical thing going on, but I didn't, I didn't know the meaning of it. But anyway, great favourite of mine. Only a fool would say that from uh, Steely Dan's debut, Can't Buy a Thrill. And I'll finish with one. This is one that um, my dad and I always used to enjoy and it's from a great album by a great artist who had so many fantastic songs John Martin, Bless the Weather, I think this is my favourite album by him I mean every song on this album is wonderful but at the end of side two he does this version of the old um, musical number Singing in the Rain, 1 minute and 58 seconds very very simple version, just him on his acoustic guitar, I think, I think there's some whistling at the end it's just very very charming and it really seems to sum up just what a great musician John Martin was not his own song, just a blink and you miss it kind of rendition but just so moving he really seems to cut to the heart of what makes that song special and uh, just yeah again long been a favourite deep cut of mine from, uh, from the great John Martin 
So there we go, uh, that's the theme. So I'll be interested to know if anybody else has got any suggestions for this, so do let me know. Obscure, obscure cuts, deep cuts, unlikely contenders for favourite songs. Uh, I'll be glad to, uh, to hear your ideas for this. So hope you enjoy the video and I'll be back soon for another one. Take care for now, see you soon.